right, kids are at school. Got all my ingredients out. Let's get to work. Hey guys, my name is Vanessa and today I am gonna be sharing seven, a week's worth of crock pot freezer meals. So I've got all my ingredients out, the kids are off at school, and this should only take me maybe two hours max. It just depends on how slow I go, but I'm going to be sharing all of them with you guys. So let's get right into recipe number one. Okay, so before you get started putting your ingredients in your bag, you do wanna make sure that you label it. So we are gonna start out with some cranberry pork. The instructions for this, you just thaw. You could either thaw it the day of in your sink in some water. I like to pull mine out overnight, just keep it in the refrigerator. So in the morning, I'm really just dumping and going. Everything you're just gonna dump in the crock pot. There's no extra ingredients needed for this one. And then we're gonna cook it on low for six to eight hours, shred the pork, and then just mix everything together in the crock pot so it's all combined. You guys are gonna see in a minute, I love using these when I'm making freezer meals. I will have them linked in the description box. I get them off of Amazon. And here are the ingredients. So for this cranberry pork, I'm using a boneless pork shoulder butt roast. You could use whatever kind of pork you want. This is just what I'm opting to use. A can of whole berry cranberry sauce. And you guys can see here they put the tag on upside down. So this is actually how I'm going to be opening my can. Going to be using a quarter cup of honey and a quarter cup of minced onion. And we are just going to dump it all into our freezer bag. Okay, once all your ingredients are in the bag, I do like to put the heaviest, which is typically the meat, in first and then everything else on top. You can see here how these just hold them nice and in place. So now I'm going to just close this, leave the last little bit open and squeeze out as much air as I can before closing the bag completely. And freezer meal number one is ready. I do like to squish around the ingredients just to try to rub it over the meat as much as possible. This is not necessary. I just feel like it helps a little bit. I just like to do it. So let's get into recipe number two. Okay, and next up we are making a turkey black bean chili. This one is not just a dump and go. I have a little bit of prep that I need to do. But as far as the day of cooking, again, I like to thaw overnight. And then we're just gonna cook on low two to four hours, um, just because everything just needs to be incorporated together, get those flavors mixed. The turkey's already going to be cooked, so you're not actually cooking any meat the day of. So for this recipe, I have one pound of ground turkey. I am going to use this entire bag of frozen corn. It's 12 ounces. I have a 29 ounce can of tomato sauce, a one can of petite diced tomatoes, and then two cans of black beans. As far as seasonings, I'm gonna be using about uh, two teaspoons of minced garlic, and as with any chili, lots and lots of yummy seasonings. So I'm going to use one tablespoon of paprika, one tablespoon of chili powder, two teaspoons of ground cumin, one and a half teaspoons of oregano leaves, and then a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper. I'm not gonna put too much of this in here because my kids don't like super spicy chili, but that is totally optional to y'all. You could omit this altogether, add more, do what you want depending on your spice tolerant. So we are gonna go ahead and cook our ground turkey first. And I did want to add that whenever I am using ground meat, whether it be chicken, turkey, or beef, this is totally optional, but I love to add a little bit of seasoning. So I always add onion powder and garlic powder. No matter what recipe I'm using this in, it just definitely takes it up a notch and adds a little bit more flavoring to your dish. And quick note, whenever you are using black beans, just in case you didn't know, always drain and rinse. You don't want the nasty liquid that comes in the can with the black beans. 
in your recipe. So I've got both cans in here. I have drained them and I just finished rinsing them off. Now I can add them to my freezer bag. All right, closed it. I've got as much air out as I could, mixed it all together. Two down, five more to go. All right, and next up is an easy five ingredient dump and go. So this is going to be pot roast. And all you're going to do for this one is just thaw overnight, cook on low eight hours until your roast is nice and tender. So for this recipe, I'm going to be using one chuck roast. Now I have never been a fan of freezing potatoes. Um, however, I've seen a couple recipes that suggest using canned potatoes. So this is gonna be a first for me, but I do have one can of whole new potatoes. And then this box came with two packages, but I just wanted to show I'm only going to use one and it is the Lipton onion soup mix. This is a big bag. This is two pounds. I'm only going to use one pound. So half of this bag of baby carrots and then one cup of water. And we are just getting all of our ingredients into the bag, closing it, getting as much air out as we can, just like all the other ones. Okay, pot roast is done. Um, I did want to mention that there's not a lot of potatoes in that can, but that's okay for us because we don't eat a lot of um, this type of carb food, especially my husband. But if you guys love potatoes, maybe add two cans and not just one. Uh, but I just wanted to say that real quick. All right, so that is done. Now we're gonna start on number four. Recipe number four is a meatball vegetable soup. This one has a little bit of prep as well and an ingredient that we are not adding into our bag. So instructions are thaw, add to the crock pot, and we are going to add four cups of chicken broth. So when I'm making freezer meals, if there is an ingredient that is shelf stable or I know is gonna last, long enough buying it up front until I make it, I do go ahead and purchase it. So I know I have everything on hand to make that freezer meal. So I have my chicken broth here. I'm going to be adding four cups when I end up cooking this recipe. And then I'm gonna cook it on low for eight hours. Um, the reason why I cook it for so long is because I like the vegetables to get nice and tender. Six hours might be long enough, but I will check it between six and eight. But I like these to be nice and tender and not crunchy at all. So speaking of vegetables, this is what I have to prep. So I have one really good size zucchini here that I'm going to dice up or not dice up, but cut into little bite-sized pieces. I'm going to dice up a medium yellow onion, and then I have a big bag of green beans here, but I'm only gonna use about three cups. I'm gonna trim the ends and then cut them into little bite-sized pieces. And the dump and go items, I have this bag of Italian style meatballs, and this is a one pound bag, or it's one pound, 10 ounces. So I'm going to use the entire bag, and then I'm going to use this Pasta sauce, you can use whatever kind of pasta sauce you want. This is just the kind that I picked up for this time. So I'm gonna get everything prepped and into my freezer bag. Okay, meatball vegetable soup is ready. This one is filled to uh, the brim. So I just left it pretty stacked here. I didn't try to mix it up or anything like that. But all right, we've got four down, three to go. Okay, recipe number five is a salsa verde chicken freezer meal. So the instructions on this one, thaw. We're going to cook on low for six hours and then we are adding another ingredient that we're not freezing. Cream cheese does not freeze well. So we are gonna add eight ounces of cream cheese, stir that in and then just let it warm back up. Make sure the cream cheese is fully incorporated. So for this recipe, I am using two packages of boneless, skinless chicken breast. Each one of these has about one to two in there. Then I'm gonna use one can of black beans. Remember to drain and rinse that. One can of corn, do not drain that. You want that extra bit of liquid. And then one 16 ounce jar of salsa verde. And then I have the cream cheese here just to show you, but you are not adding that in your bag. These are the only ingredients that you are dumping into your freezer bag. 
salsa verde chicken ready to go. I kind of smushed the bag up just to get the salsa as much as I could all over the chicken, nice and combined. But oh my goodness, we are getting there. Two more to go. Okay, recipe number six is another chicken recipe. And yes, I'm prepping it ahead of time. Could I make this the morning of? Probably, but I am in the groove of getting recipes set to go freezer meals and it really does just take that extra step out. It's already in the bag, I dump it all in the crock pot. So for this one, I am using chicken tenderloins. I just feel like they shred a little smaller. It might totally be in my head, but that's just what I prefer. So I've got these two packages of chicken tenderloins and a fajita seasoning mix. I really like this with stir fry. I just feel like it tastes really yummy. And then you could get whatever kind of stir fry bag that you want. They have a pepper one that would be really good if you really wanted it to be more like fajitas. But I love water chestnuts and baby corn cobs. And whenever I get the chance to use them, I jump on it. So I got the deluxe stir fry. It has broccoli, Italian green beans, carrots, baby corn cobs, water chestnuts, and red peppers. Yum. So again, just dumping all of it into my freezer bag. Okay, almost done. Here's the chicken stir fry. Now let's see what the last recipe is gonna be. Okay, last but not least, I am throwing together a like a beef teriyaki. And for this one, instructions, directions, just thaw. I'm going to add to the crock pot, and I'm gonna add half a cup of water just to give it a little bit of a liquid. And I'm gonna cook it on low for four hours. So for this recipe, the meat that I'm using, these are just beef slices that I got from a meal delivery kit that I didn't end up using as they suggested because I was missing some ingredients. So it's just been in my freezer. I took it out, let it thaw just enough for me to get it out of the package. That way I could put it all together in my bag. So I've got three separate servings of just sliced beef. I'm going to add a 16 ounce bag of sugar snap peas. And then I'm going to just add this teriyaki seasoning mix on there. And I think I'm going to end up serving this with cauli rice or regular rice or probably make both because my kids don't like cauliflower rice. So I just think that would be a quick and easy and a really yummy meal. So three ingredients just adding into my freezer bag. And ta-da! Okay, seven meals for my crock pot ready for the freezer. I cannot wait to try some of these. Yum, I love having meals in the freezer. It just helps all out a lot. So here's the last one, the beef teriyaki. So now I need to get these in my freezer. It's lunchtime, this did take me close to not quite two hours, but Filming it does take a little bit longer, and then I did have a little bit of prep to do. And after lunch, let me show you here. I got dishes to do from the freezer meals and cans to take to our recycle in the garage. <laughs> so, yum. I love taking just an hour or two every now and then to get myself some meals in the freezer. Okay, so done with the freezer meals. I did want to let you guys know that these will last about three months in the freezer. So just make sure if you wanted to add that on the bag, so you could write the date that you're putting it in the freezer and then the date under it could be the date that you need to eat it by. That helps out a lot. I just typically, I go through my freezer meals. Once I make them, I start incorporating them into my meal plan. So I just wanted to let you guys know that up to three months for this set of freezer meals. So I hope you guys like this video. I haven't done a freezer meal in a while and I'm pretty sure this is the first video in our new house. No, I did a Costco haul that was in this house, but this is the first like a cook with me, a prep with me type of video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you know somebody in your life, friends, family, loved ones that like to do freezer meals, share this video with them. That would help me out a lot. I would appreciate it. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. I have a one more pretty big crock pot video coming next week and it is a collab with somebody you guys are going to love. So hit that thumbs up button for this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.